everybody, and welcome to another episode of Sharp Cuts. I think that's why I did the intro, Garrett, because you hope my voice would crack. That's the energy <laughs> I'm bringing to the show. I am in one, my friend. I lost my voice Saturday, but I rallied as we're recording this, Garrett. I am absolutely in one. The people on YouTube are probably like, who is this like guy who looks like he's 40, who sounds like he's 14? But that's the dedication we have to this show right now, Garrett. Yes, Garrett, welcome, to Sharp, you gotta welcome to the people of Sharp Cuts. Like, come on, first time doing the intro here, guy? You're so nervous, voice cracked? Like, what are you, hey, welcome to the show. I was so like, excited that you asked me to do it, and I just folded up because my voice cracked within the first sentence. But, Garrett, before we get to you, I'd like to introduce our guests because, really, that's why we have a show. So, joining us is part of the AUS, which is a show I haven't showed, or excuse me, a conference I haven't showed a lot of love to, uh, but Acadia having a big season. And if Luke and Bella were here, they'd be like, oh, well, you know, you don't really give a lot of love to the AUS. AUS? Well, that's because she's an Ontario athlete, and that's why she's on the show. So she actually represented Nova Scotia at Canada Games, but we still love her here in Ontario. So please welcome to the show, Becky Dorsey. Well, I said be here. I'm a big fan of the show. Uh, you, that, oh, is that a joke, or are you serious? <laughs> no, that's, just, that's serious. So when I, we were explaining how the show works, you were like being incredibly polite and like being like, oh, yeah, yeah, but really you knew how the show works, and you've been hustling us this whole time. Yeah, no, I've, I've listened to quite a bit. Have you um, heard the episodes of Josh every episode. chirping the AUS? <laughs> um, I have heard Josh chirping the AUS. Yes, it has gone around the community, Josh. You're you're no, you're notorious yeah. for being the asshole and, and about that group. To be fair, it's mostly on the men's side, uh, if anything. I, uh, the women have their own coffee. Don't walk there, it back. It. Don't you walk it back this early in the episode that you did the intro, Josh. Come on. We can definitely chirp the men's side of the U.S. Oh. Yes, I'm not. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. Well, Josh, considering you did the intro, I think we, uh, we'll jump into some things that I wanted to talk about. Why? Why else? I mean, why else did we start the, sh start the, the show? The show is all about you, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you just take Like, of course. Over. Why, yeah. why else did we start the show? It wasn't just to talk about things that I thought were interesting. So, I was thinking about it the other day, and I often struggle with this, you two and listeners, is... And maybe you don't because you're a better person than me. But what is the point of the high performance mentality? Hey, let's strive to win. Let's strive to improve and be the best and get as far as we can and win at as much as we can in lower tiers, divisions, you know, lower leagues, tier two on like teams that aren't at the top of their respective region, group, whatever. And I, I don't really have a great answer because the more I think about it, I go, what is the point of it? Why don't you just play for other reasons other than to win? But I, maybe that's a hot take, Josh. I don't know. Uh, there's there's so many layers to this, Gary, that we're going to rip into. The, the one that comes to mind right away is I don't think those kids need to get the track suit and the backpack and all that stuff. Like, why are we spending, like, an extra $1,000 on our clothing kit when, like, you can just use your own backpack? Like, I hate when clubs are charging huge fees for people who just want to maybe practice once at most twice a week and go to, like, four or five tournaments. I don't think they need the accessories. I think that's a bit over the top. I, I do think that everyone should try to win. Like, I think you should be trying to improve yourself and pushing. Like, that's one of the soft skills that comes from sport, like pushing yourself, trying to get better. But the, the other side of that, Garrett, is if you're right, if we're not trying to win, then should it be equal playing time, even up to, like, 17U and 18U? Like, if we're all paying the same fees, do I get to play no matter what? Like, that's maybe something I can Interesting get on board with. Interesting you're free. going club, though, Josh. I thought the low-hanging fruit would be another shot at the AUS division. <laughs> no. Like it was the low hanging fruit. I set it up for you and you didn't take the bait. <laughs> it was right there. Now that I'm here. Right. Like well, you I'm just not. you could you you're backing down already, Josh. <laughs> Garrett, the budget these teams have to bus all the way to Quebec to get beat like three straight. Like I'm not gonna call them a tier four team. They obviously have like fees and people like participating, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that would have been okay, incredible. Well we don't have to bus to Quebec. Sorry, not the women's they AUS. They fly to Quebec, Josh. Oh, big budget. <laughs> or maybe they don't go at all. I don't. I don't know. We should maybe educate ourselves, <laughs> Josh. Okay. You don't do interlock. Let's settle this right now, Becky. You don't do interlock. You don't go to Quebec very often, right? We don't play any Quebec teams. So the women's side of the AUS is us, SMU, Dow, Moncton, Memorial, and UNB. So we fly to Memorial. So we were there twice last semester, but other than that, we just bust. They fly to Memorial, Josh. Like they ain't a, they ain't a, tier, ain't a tier two program out there, okay? 
Well, speaking of Tier 2, Garrett, now that I've looked at the men's standings, uh, Dalhousie and UNB have combined for four wins this year, so that's that's good for them. We're all sure we're going to be straight. Congrats. So I'm just, four, out of, you know, four out of four games, right? It's still early, right? And that four. was me being soft again, saying that they've combined for four wins. Dalhousie has oh, all four of those wins. Yeah, UNB, I was going to say, I don't think UNB has any. Okay. Yeah, yes. I, I mean, again... Yeah, we don't know what time what time means. But does that mean they don't get to have matching uniforms, Garrett? Does that mean equal playing time? No, this is U Sports. That's not, this is a high performance league. Well, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way, Josh. In university sport in Canada, for example, we've got two leagues, right? We've got two leagues. We've got the university league and we've got the college league. So which league is the top league? University, university. whatever they play head to head, I think universities always be college teams. And then there, there's there's exceptions where maybe Douglas is really good this year, or Humber or Fanshawe is really good. But I think pound for pound, U Sports typically does better. And it's it's the structure of the school system, right? Like sometimes at George Brown, we had an athlete for one year. At university, you get them for four or five. Or because of this thing called COVID, Garrett, there's actual six years playing in U Sports right now. Imagine six years to develop an athlete. We have a 29 year old on our team. Currently, you, you say twenty nine like it's a really high age, like it's a really old person. <laughs> uh, I, I'd say it's a pretty high age to still be playing. Hey, I got a year left. Okay, maybe you're gonna get a thirty year old coming back and playing. Right? Little fifth year action. So my point by asking that question was, is okay. So say you're in a, the college league. Like, does that not? Don't you realize that you're in the the lower league then? Are you not aware of that? Like you're not playing at university, so why are you playing on a team that's up, like about the, the the high performance mentality and you know running your starters all year and you know going going to go undefeated, go and get the win, get that trophy at all costs, and like and, and not putting your focus into something else. Maybe we should define high performance. So you're saying, well, let's just pick on friend of the show, Sam Schachter at George Brown. They've won two games this year. So are you saying to have success this year, he should have thrown out the idea to get a banner? And it should have been, like, how many guys can we get on the court? Can we have a really good team culture? Is everyone going to have a good experience? Like, would that be a better year than them trying to chase this goal for the banner? And now they're 2-14 and 14 and they're having probably a bad experience. Like, is there other ways to have success in college? I, I don't know. Are you going to have the... Do you want to be the team who has the most fun, Garrett? Because uh, you, you grew up in a household where winning is fun. Right. This is why I struggle with it, Josh. It's because it comes so naturally to me that you have to win at all costs. But it's like, hold on. There are other ways to succeed, especially in leagues or divisions that are not the top. Like, if you're, if you're not going to be the best in your province, country, world, then there are other ways to succeed. I mean, you don't have to be... Like, think about how many kids, to go back to the club thing, and Becky, I don't know if you've seen this before, but you, you go through club and a kid doesn't get a ton of playing time and they quit. But they're in tier three! Yeah, I think there's a, a big difference between like a col the college league and club, and like especially when you're a lower tier. And I feel like in lower tiers in like the OBA, they should be putting in fair play rules. Because I think at that point, like people are playing sports at that level, maybe because their parents want them to. There's like different reasons for them being there. I think when you get to the university or college level, you're choosing, like you make that choice to go. And the, like the reason you want to be there is to compete. So I think at club levels, you need to kind of take into account that maybe people are there for other reasons than to win or get recruited. They're there for, I don't know, just to have fun because they like playing. Um, they like their team. They want to yeah. stay active. I like a lot about what you said, Becky, but not every college and university team is player is there to win or to compete even. I bet if you ask the majority of them what they wanted to get out of the experience, I bet a higher percentage, much higher percentage would say, I'm here to have a great time and be social and meet a bunch of fun people that I can hang out with while I'm getting my education. Yet, yeah. how many teams do we know of in the league that are under 50% win percentage? Let's say, I don't know, I'm making that up. Under 50% win percentage, who set the goal to win that year? Who failed horribly in their goal, 
didn't do fair play, didn't have fun, like basically failed in all aspects of their season. And it's like, man, can we succeed in other ways so more people, I don't know, more people have more successful years? I, like, I, I don't know. I feel like yes, but is that is that so, blasphemous of me to say? Who gets to decide, right? Because well, uh, when a younger Garrett May was on Passing Times, you talked about when you arrived at Western, their goal was to like, make OUA Final Four and you're like, make Final Four, we can win Nationals. So the goal wasn't high enough and like you kind of had a presence that influenced yourself there. What if you went to a George Brown College and the goal was to have fun? Like, did you have to know that when you sign up? Like who gets to determine that? And then how do you measure that as success? Like, I'm not saying you can't be high performance and have fun, but you can have equal playing time and be high performance. I think those two things are, are not connected. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't have a great answer for you, Josh. But because no. playing play time should be earned, isn't that like a skill we earn through sport? That if you you can like create your own opportunity, if you work hard enough, and you know you you, you get better, you improve in your skills, you beat out other people in practice. Like, isn't that a spirit of sport? I agree, but then, you're now like throwing out the window by saying, you know what, you've skipped the last two practices, but because you play at College ABC and we're not trying to win a banner, we're trying to have fun. You're right. gonna get, you're gonna play the third set tonight. Right, but think how many people fail in that effort, Josh in a thing that's not for money you you pay for it there's no reward for success other than just playing like the amount of people who fail like and then have a bad time and are bitter is high don't you think Yeah, and the checklist you just created isn't exclusive to college. Like, it's not exclusive to college. It no, be, it's like, like, like every every team, like, I just, I don't know, it was bothering me thinking about, like, because if you asked, if you asked coaches, club coaches, college coaches, university coaches, what's the goal for the team this year? How many of them do you think would say to win? How many of them? All of them? That's so that's so deep in sport when you're a little kid and you call your grandparents after the game, the first thing they usually ask is, how did you do? They don't say, who had the most fun today? And you say, well, Johnny had the most fun, but I was second today, Grandma. It's like, how did you do? That's so ingrained in what sport is for so many people. Or like, did you get better today? Did you, did you get better? Did, did you learn something today? You know? Were you challenged? Ooh, did you yeah. face the challenge? Ooh. Did you make a friend today? Were you a good sports person today? Carrie, you've just blown my mind on coaching kids. I want to coach kids now and have a team that doesn't care about winning. We're just going to have more fun than everybody else. My guy! My guy! There it is! Let's go! Becky, take this the back to your team. Swirls. We're going to have a cool name. Yep, we're not going to win. That's it. No That's winning. It. I, I'm coaching a club team right now, and we had um, a really rough weekend. We had our first Super Series and went oh and five um but we set goals for each game about like performance goals did you or meet them? we did but uh, it's still so difficult to see that as a win right um, even when you're setting those goals and you're setting yourself up being like we don't need to win this it still doesn't feel like you achieved your goals in a situation like that yeah so it's a hard thing to do to be like well our goal is just to have fun Okay, yeah, I am so agree with you. Here's what it's bringing up in me. It is so much harder to lose well than to win well. Like, so much harder. Think about coming away from a tournament that you lost or a match that you lost and feeling good about it. It's like impossible. Yeah, no, you. it's so hard because that it's like you're actually just maybe not good enough to win at that point. But like, is that what it is? Right. Is that, so that's the feeling you have where you're like, what's what do we need to change in order to be able to play our best and win instead of play our best and lose? Right. When, like, the reality is, is 50% of the games that happen end in a loss for one team. Tournaments only have one winner. So everyone's going home sad, except for one team? Like, holy! What, what do other sports do? Like, do other sports have like a, 
you know, like for kids, as, you know, for kids or like for, you know, um, up and coming and youth leagues, like do they have other ways of doing this? Or is it just everybody's pissed all the time? Well, I think soccer gets picked on the most where they don't keep score up until a certain age group, right? Like you just play for time, but like the kids know the score, I think. Um, I, I don't know, Garrett, like if you took like a seventh at a nine team tournament, but you ran pipes and you, all your kids jump served and they walk away being like, that was so much fun. Like, oh, we almost had those guys. Like, do you think you're leaving in a good experience? Like, I, I don't know. You have to frame it in such a way and be so consistent with the message that, like, yeah, the wins and losses are going to come up eventually. Like, uh, I don't know. It's, it's so tough. Yeah. And I think my point in all this is that I think in our sport especially, we've got to do a better job of framing losing and finding other ways to have success, whether that be fun, learning, improvement, you know, Sport, sportspersonship, fair play, I don't know, fun, joking around, social media. Like, think about even pro leagues. Like, think about a tier five pro league, indoor. You know, like the Swedish pro league. Like, they know they're not the best league. They're gonna, people coming in. What's, what's, what's the important to that team? Ticket sales, right? You wanna get people out to the games. So how do you do that? Well, you have a fun environment for people to come around. You put on a good product. That could mean winning, but sometimes winning is boring. That could mean other stuff, right? So it could even look different at the pro level. It's so timely you bring this up because I went back and listened to one of our episodes because I do that selfishly sometimes. Not to hear myself talk, but Gary, when we talked about, uh, there was an American beach player who talked about, I made winning a skill. I wasn't the best server. I wasn't this, so I made winning a skill. And I think at the end of the episode, we all agreed that competing is the skill. So maybe if you tell your team, we want to compete and you want to have that rush of doing your best, then I can maybe get on board if we lost. But if everybody tried their best and it was fun and it was exciting and you put yourself out there, like then I probably don't care if we took a fifth, if everybody like had that high of like doing your best. But again, the message has to be super clear. Everybody has to know what they sign up for because here we are nodding our heads in theory about this, but I can guarantee a 15 year old Becky and a 15 year old Garrett would not be switched on if their club coach in the first introduction said, parents, athletes, if you're trying out for this team, we don't care about winning. <laughs> right, but I'm a bad example. Like I'm sure Becky's a bad example too, right? Like I'm not the kid who should have been on the team like that, right? Like some teams have to be after winning. We are There is a high performance scene in all sports. So it's not like some of the teams should go after winning. In fact, a lot of them should, but definitely not most of them, right? Does this maybe not reflect the model a little bit of our sport? We're in the OVA, and I, I don't know what it is in Nova Scotia, Becky, you mentioned the Super Series, which is probably like a two-day tournament. But right now in the OVA, I think everybody gets the same. And then there's a couple like two-day Grand Prix or obviously provincial championships a little bit different. But Garrett, if you sign up and, and the OVA sorts to, if you're in Tier 1, you're playing a one-day Saturday tournament just like the Tier 5 team is. So if we're going to focus on competing and doing your best, does this maybe not preach a league model and the reason I say that is because maybe you cut down on travel and you only like you go to a central gym and you play a couple games on like a weeknight versus like, why do I need to drive to Ottawa from Toronto or vice versa with my 15 year boys team in tier three? Like, why do we need to have that expense or that travel when we like you said, we just want to play for fun. So why aren't there like regional level competitions so that there's not so much financial stress or time stress on the parents to get their kid involved? Because you're right, the, the high performers need to play against the other high performers. I'm totally on board with that. But tier four, five, six, whatever we're talking about here, uh, I don't know if they need to be driving three hours for a tournament. Yeah. Yeah. To back like, does hockey do it because they have the volume? Like, is that why house league hockey works? Because they have a billion kids playing and they can cut it into pockets? Like, is volleyball just not as big? So we can't. If you're from Sudbury, you're driving to the GTA to play a tournament, and that's just how it goes right now? Volleyball sucks, okay? I was just going to backtrack there on why... I'm just thinking about why it's so hard to um, set goals of being like, let's just have fun. Because volleyball is such a game of mistakes that if you're losing a game and you're losing... If you're losing badly and a team is just, like, serving at you and you're shanking balls, then how are you having fun in that moment? Like... I think volleyball is only fun when it's a competitive game. And if you're if you're lacking that, then 
to having you can't just have fun. You lack like the skills and the performance level. That is such like, a great I, point. Like think yeah, about basketball. I would feel like that. Yeah, like think about basketball where if you lose by forty, but you scored thirty, right? Them scoring you didn't, you didn't screw up, you didn't shank it. You know what I mean? Like you didn't make them, they scored. Un, like you, they beat your defense, but it wasn't like directly off of you. Whereas, and you could have scored some points yourself. Whereas in volleyball, if you serve an ace, it's not them just shanking off a specific player who's feeling bad. Yeah, like I think it's hard to like, it would be hard to play at a lower level and just the game, because the game becomes even more about mistakes at that point. It's always someone making a mistake, not like, okay, you go up and you get a huge kill at the university level. Like, that's, you earn your points at times, but at that level, I'm sure a lot of the points are just errors. Yeah. And that's harder to, harder to play through and harder to have fun with. That is so true. Like, volleyball, well, let's compare it to other sports for a sec. Like, compared to other sports, what sport does the result, does a scoring play result in a specific error by your opponent as much as volleyball? The simple answer would be other net sports like a badminton or a tennis maybe, but uh, invasion sports, like a net sport like hockey, soccer, basketball, where it's a team sport invading like a, a goal, it's easier to have fun and still lose. Like hockey, you can have fun and lose 7-2, I think. Like Yeah. And to Becky's point, if somebody fumbles it, like the play goes on, it doesn't stop, and we have to get organized and restart. Like, yeah, yeah. So basically, net sports are all about failures. Net sports are failures, is what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. We all should have picked a different sport, I guess, is what we're saying. Yeah, we yeah. would have had more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and made more money, Josh. What are we doing? It's too late. We yeah. can't. We can't pivot now. <sighs> All right, so let's cheer ourselves solve, up Garrett? a little bit. No, we're not solving it. What do you mean? So how do we okay. solve it? We're not solving it. We, since when do we actually have wisdom on this show? Well, when I coach the Flying Squirrels, we're going to have more fun than anybody. We're going to play That's music. That's such a great we're team name. Shorts. <laughs> the Flying Squirrels? I want to play on that team. You see? Yeah. How about the Sharks with laser beams on their heads? You can get cool jerseys, like cool shorts with them. Like, yes. Yeah. Like, let's go. What? What is all? Everybody's a Panther. Everybody's a lion. Like, there's how many huskies are there? Hundreds. Let's get some cool mascots. Like, some of the biggest clubs in Ontario are red and black, like Leaside, Durham Attack, Ottawa Mavericks. Like, I, I, we don't need any more red and black jerseys running around. Like, no. Let's get some funky aqua or some purple action. I don't know. Aqua purple. with laser beam pink going through the stripes there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm here for it. You're paying a thousand bucks for the kid anyways, so let's get some funky <laughs> colors on there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, here's how I think we solve it, actually, Josh, because it does segue into my next topic. I thought we were going to get to Players and Clowns of the Week, but we'll have to wait for that. Because I think, ultimately, it is led by the team leader. And who is the team leader? Quiz for you, Josh. Who's the team leader? See, the simple answer is the coach, but I don't know. Some some clubs might have a club director that says we're all about winning here, and that kind of dictates what the what the team is about. Or maybe it's the parents because they're the ones paying the fees. Okay, way to sit on the fence with that answer like you always do, unbelievably. <laughs> like, come on, it's a common nickel. I should have expected that. No, it's the coach, okay? The co simple answer is co it's the answer, Josh. You failed the quiz, okay? It's the coach or the director. I'll take the director here, but... I was also thinking about Clowns of the Week, and I didn't go this way because I actually couldn't think of any specifics, but the other thing that bothers me about this when I start thinking about you know, this high performance mentality is all these dumbass coaches out there, like just complete idiots, and I am not talking, I'm not talking about the nice people who go out there and have no idea what they're doing, right? Those are not dumb. Th those are people who are in earnest doing their best. I'm talking about the people who know better or who think they know better and are going out there and doing a bunch of dumb things. So I want to hear what do you guys, give me your best. Give me your best dumb coaching move. I mean, you can call out a dumb coach if you want, but I don't know if we're ready to do that. But dumb coaching move, I want to hear it. 
the, the most petty thing I've ever seen in Ontario Championships, Garrett, was uh, there, there was a young official on the stand, and maybe they blew a couple calls, and this coach ran out of timeouts. So to basically stall the game and just annoy this official, they did an illegal sub, and obviously with a parent volunteer working the score sheet, like if Becky subs in for Garrett and then Josh subs in for Becky, like in the moment you allow that sub because you're like, why would they do an illegal sub? And then by the time you catch it, you got to go back in rotation, you got to take away points. And this coach just sat in their chair with their legs crossed with like the, the most cocky smirk being like, yeah, you, you didn't catch it in time. So I'm basically delaying the whole tournament because I'm being a bit of a, a jerk here. So I think that was the most petty thing I saw was an intentional illegal sub to make this like 17 year old ref have to like struggle with this parent to find it on a score sheet. And it was like 16 years. Uh, at Ontario Provincials, like not tier one either. Like but, just. I mean, you're a petty guy, Josh. So do you not respect the pettiness? That that one's a little too petty. It's I, even I below think. you. Okay. <laughs> I've protested many a times and won. I don't know if that's petty, but I've done that. I've I've been the guy taking it way too serious and protested at a youth event, but I've never like fumbled and tried to like, psych out the parents. Tier three, <laughs> seventh place match. Josh is protesting. <laughs> It was a 15U girls uh, Eastern Nationals, and I must have delayed the tournament for about 20 minutes because I said, no, that's, that's wrong. You're misapplying the rule. And I just, yeah, the, the green shirts had to come out and try to calm me down. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not playing on. Nice. You got any dumb moves, Becky? Dumb moves. Um, Racking the brain this is for all of the dumb moves in history. There's too many almost. Yeah. It's an epidemic. Well, the first... The first thing that came to mind was my 18 new year, and I don't know, this isn't a dumb move, this is just an emotional reaction that was big. And it's hilarious now, because all of the girls that I play with that are in my year were all, like, all Ontario girls, so they were, I was playing against one or two of them, and then the other two were in the stands watching. Um, there had been a couple of bad calls. We were playing Mavs, and our coach just lost it threw the clipboard on the um, court, but the plastic clipboard and shattered into like a thousand pieces. Oh gosh. Uh, yeah, so like the throwing the clipboard is bad, but the fact that it um, shattered just made everything so much more dramatic. And so then- you need the broom out and eat. clean it up? Yeah, and <laughs> the, ra the ref made him like sit take his chair and sit in the corner because he was no longer allowed to coach and he got he ended up getting suspended but i know like my my dad takes pictures of all or took pictures of all the tournaments and i have a there's a picture of him sitting in the chair in the corner because the like, ref said the corner, in the corner of what the corner of the gym like he's sitting in like the back corner just like, like he was like put in the corner like a child did he have to face the other way too? Yeah, I was like, I didn't think that was the protocol there, but yeah, go, go was, sit in the corner. <laughs> corner of shame. How many times is a story gonna come up of, of somebody putting somebody in a corner on this show? Like this has happened too many times on this show. We've heard an adult telling another adult to go sit in the corner. <laughs> it's happened too many times in volleyball. <laughs> I'm gonna pull that out of practice, Josh. Go sit in the corner. Go sit in the corner. Absolutely. Oh gosh. I mean, the one, the the one I, that I was thinking of is because we talked about it on the show previously is, you know, opposing coach calling the timeout at game point for them, like icing their own server a little bit, um, which is just just kind of interesting, interesting maneuver. But like, I'm talking about like dumb rotations. Like, just, like, really, really dumb moves. I mean, I also like the coach freakouts, though. Because the coach freakouts, like, the clipboard slam, absolutely. The chair throw, have you ever seen one of those? I haven't, but I've had um, a coach throw, grab a ball and throw it at the stands. Like, throw it at the crowd. Like, at a person? In our first year, um... <laughs> We had a coach throw from a court. They were on the like opposite side too. So he threw it across the court into the stands twice in one game. Twice? The ref did nothing. Twice. He did it twice. And it was at it was at like our football team because they were just like I don't know, just being obnoxious. Wait, it was like, at your football team. Back. Like our a friendly? football team was there. Oh. Our football team was there cheering, and he just like 
chucked the ball at them. And it, and then I remember we played them back to back. And I remember the next day, the football team, like, all showing up with their helmets on, like, <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. Like, how childish move is that? Like, you, 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 you somehow get the ball. How did you get the ball, by the way? Like, you had to have gotten it off, like, a shank or something. Like, that yeah. is a ball there. So it's like between round, and you just decided to just... <laughs> It was it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Just I did it twice, and then the second time, like the football guys were sitting. Then there's also a lot of kids from the community that come to our games. So there's a little girl, and I think she was I think she was like four or something, sitting beside the football team, and almost got hit. And one of the guys had to like kind of jump in front. It was crazy, and the refs did nothing. The refs did nothing. <laughs> no, like he he just coached on. Like it was. Everyone just went about their business. Oh, man, that is so good. I mean, it's terrible, right? Obvi obviously. Mm -hmm. But once we get over the fact that it's terrible, it's hilarious. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's like the kid yeah. in the schoolyard when, like, the game's not going your way and you throw yeah. at somebody. It's like Shaq, that clip of Shaq when he just, like, throw, the guy throws the ball at him when he gets dunked on or whatever. Oh, gosh. That is hilarious. Like, you, you risk getting suspended doing stuff like that? Oh, gosh. But that's too funny. Oh. Yeah. That was, that was a memorable moment. For sure. Any other dumb moves by you, Josh? No, I, I don't think I've ever seen it in person, but uh, a few years ago there was that clip of the international coach who intentionally rolled a ball on the court to, like, stop them from losing. Like, I think that's pretty, like, childish, right? Like... Mm -hmm. Now, it's like full on cheating. Uh, it, yeah, that's a bad one. It, but you get you get something for that, right? Like you get a card. I think if they prove it's you, like I think he was at like near the box squad and he kind of just like rolled it off his hip onto the court and then oh stop 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 stop. So yeah, one of those. Uh, so you got nothing. I, I'm trying to think. I would have to go back and watch Man, the clip. But I'm also thinking like if you're playing professional, how often is a ball rolling on your court? Like where did the ball come from? I don't understand. Like it's not like it's a club tournament. Like that's true. That's true. Oh man, man, too funny. Okay, I'll try to think of some more. I, I, I should have been better prepared for that because Becky's story just killing me. Here. I so just, what are you trying to do? Like you're trying to throw a volleyball like 15 meters across the gym and try and hope that you like pelt somebody with it. Like you can't throw a volleyball that hard, especially yeah. in varsity athletes sitting in the bleachers across the gym. Like it's uh, that was, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, I remember that game just being like. I think it was one of our first uh, first times playing with like this team, and I was just shocked by like his behavior. Because at least they didn't kick it. If they would have kicked it in the swearing, stands, so. he was swearing at the, the the same group of football guys the whole game. And the refs are just just letting it all happen. Yeah. So when we talk about volleyball, we talk a lot about oh yeah, let's get the culture with the kids, and you know, really, it's the coaching culture that really establishes a lot of this. I think we're learning so. Let's get some. Let's get some uh, more coaching clinics or something. Some free ones like they have in Region Three going on or whatever. Josh, I don't know. What a great idea that was. Kudos to them. That's a, that's two shoutouts now, Gary. Yeah, I, I mean, I earned it. Okay, let's move on because we teased it earlier. Let's move on to everybody's favorite segment. It's players and clowns of the week. And Josh, like I, 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 I underperformed this week. I, I have to be honest. Like I only have one each, and I don't know how good they are. Um, so I'm just gonna start. Because we're going to give Becky some more time to think about it, because we've sprung this on her, although she's a fan of the show, so maybe she was already prepared and is going to dominate us, in which case I should then set it up for that with a week one to start to get the domination at the end. So my player of the week goes to Spike Air Volleyball. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this. Maybe you probably haven't, but... Volleyball and video games are kind of the two major loves of my life. I mean, other than my family, of course, but two kind of passions, my hobbies in my life. And volleyball video games is a melding of those two things. So I'm always on the lookout for volleyball video games. We've done a lot of it on the Yes Guy Gaming YouTube channel. I haven't done that in a while, but um, one of the games that I've kind of been watching is two guys who've gotten together and have been developing this game called Spike Air Volleyball. It's just come out now on Steam in early access. So what they're doing is they're like putting the game out and getting people to come in and play it and then get feedback from them while they develop it and make it better. It's actually pretty good. 
Um, it's uh, it's actually a pretty good game, and it's challenging. Like, there's some strategy and there's some skill to it. Um, so I really like it, and I I think if you can go out there, buy it, play it, to let these guys know what you think. Um, because everybody I talk to is like, oh yeah, volleyball video game, that'd be great. Well, okay, there's one coming, and it's pretty good. So are we gonna support it? I've I've got my copy. So congrats to those guys. Um, Spike Air Volleyball, check it out. Nice job with the no free ads on the show, Garrett. Good. They they owe us some royalties, but uh, yeah. I mean, do they? If any, if anybody got does go and buy it, and I'm gonna tell them, I'm, I'm in the community. I'm gonna let them know. Like, hey, I sent over. Comment down below if you go and buy the game and if you like it. If you buy the game and you hate it, then I gotta take that E too, Josh, because then I, I'm recommending it. Is it on a bunch of platforms? What what's uh, like? Do I need to play that's this? A, that's a guy should see a bad ad by me because I didn't even say the platform. Yeah, it's available on Steam. If you're a gamer, you probably know Steam. If you're not, you probably don't. But quick Google search will help you out there. Good stuff. You know Steam, Josh? You a gamer? You a gamer friend? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, the kid who delivers our newspaper in the neighborhood was wearing an N64 sweater, and I complimented him, and I probably thought it was weird that, again, this guy who looks really old was talking to him. But uh, a lot of hours wasted on the old GoldenEye, Garrett. It was a classic but, game. But but no, you, you still don't know what Steam is? No, no. I okay. don't. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, get with it, Josh. Cause, you know, a quick Google search will solve that, though. Yeah, I hope. I mean, if it doesn't, then we have bigger <laughs> problems. So... For sure, uh, for sure. Okay, over to you for Player of the Week, Josh. So my honorable mention, Garrett, uh, I'll hop on the Sherbrooke bandwagon because they do have a lot of beach guys. Sherbrooke's won 12 straight, and my guy, Zach Hollins, he was on the summer next-gen team two years ago. Uh, 11 kills, only three airs on 28 attempts for 13 points on Friday. And then Sunday, he, he just outdone himself. He got 16 kills, only five airs on 33 attempts, 17 points. He's like the stereotypical P2, but he's going off with points right now. Sherbrooke is leading the RCQ beating up on those East Coast teams uh, this past weekend uh, to add to their 12 straights. They actually beat up on Montreal and Laval. So Sherbrooke, not a traditional powerhouse, but the last two years, Garrett, they've been popping off. And I like to credit the beach guys, so whenever I can give them a shout out. But uh, my true player... Hold on, that was your honorable mention? Garrett. That was like a full plug? That was my... Oh, I've got... It was a full one. And I got to... Before you go on, before we move on from Sherbrooke, I got to call you up because you said, I'm going to jump on the Sherbrooke bandwagon. You've been on the bandwagon for Sherbrooke. <laughs> when did you get off? Uh, I think when I said anyone who has green and yellow jerseys can't be the best jersey in the league because yeah. it's ugly. There's no combination yeah. that makes that work. Yeah, they hated that. They definitely hated that. But you're back on. Okay. Yeah. Honorable yes. mention, though. Not um, enough to give them the full player of the week. Not, no, even, a, not player, even a shared player of the week. Only an honorable mention. No. Honorable mention, because this player absolutely popped off. So, uh, Garrett, I've actually never had the joy of seeing this team play. So, RCQ Women, University of Quebec in Montreal, UQAM, is in first place right now. And on Sunday, Sabrina Mayer, she got 14 kills, only five errors on 39, good for 22. But the game I want to spotlight is Friday, 25 kills, only three errors on 49 attempts for 27 total points. UQAM is in first. That's right, not Montreal, not McGill, not Laval. The University of Quebec in Montreal is in first place, Garrett. I've never seen this play team play. I, they might have the best or worst jerseys in the league. I've never seen them. I mean, 25 kills. Maybe you should check them out, Josh. But again, do I dare say wagon, and do they get the sharp cuts bump? Do they continue this, or did I just sewer them, and they're going to like quickly drop here? Yeah, like the sharp cut, the sharp cuts bump works both ways. Like it, it, it could go, it could bump you up, it could bump you off the top, and you fall over. So. Be be careful with with who you're gonna bandwagon on, because sure, I mean you're already on Sherbrooke's bandwagon, so you're gonna get on this team's bandwagon. On the York Lions bandwagon, I just yeah. Yeah, well they're headed. We know what's gonna happen there, so yeah, just take take her easy. Well, congrats <laughs> to that, and like you're you're honestly gonna have Becky on, and give it to give your player of the week to another player, not in the same division, but in the same league while she's on the show. Well, no, RCQ and AUS are still separate on the women's side. And Gary, when I was going through the U Sports standings and results, because I, I like to give players of the week to the local stars, I like to show you know the the student athlete. Uh, I didn't know what UQAM stood for when I when I looked at it first. That's how little I knew about this institution. But they've won five in a row. They're twelve and four. Like just, what's happening we, right now, Gary? We played them um, over Christmas break during exhibition. We played at UQAM. UQAM. They were, they were a good team. Well, you're both being very nice here. 
But I mean, if it were my opponent, it's the player's part. Yeah. If it were an opponent of mine, anybody in the, any division that I was playing in, I'd be like, no, that can't fly. So, I mean, you guys are better than me. So, I mean, congrats though. You Quam, what does it stand for? University of uh, University of Quebec in Montreal is, is the English translation. Oh, ah, ah, Montreal. Ah, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are we going to do the next episode of French, Garrett? Aren't you supposed to have a little <laughs> bit of French as the next-gen men's coach, like get some of the Quebec athletes out there? I tried. Uh, Simone Factor Boutin and Mikhail Dejeuner, they, they made a, a translation sheet for me, and everything was spelled phonetically, so it was easy to, like, uh, you know, allez, allez, like, really, like, pronounce what I was trying to get through, because we do have a lot of Quebec athletes, so I tried to... My best, the problem is, Garrett... They're so smart as they want to work on their English when they typically train in Toronto, and I was trying to work on my French, and we didn't really connect there, but uh, i got to be better. You're right. Okay, great. Thanks for admitting it. Um, okay, over to Becky. Player of the week, what do you got for us? Well, you're going to hate this, because I was I chose one of my opponents. What? I, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Is this the second? No, this is like, we've had this too many times. Sean did the same thing. That's a Sean McKay move. Because yeah. it stood out in my head because we just got ripped apart by her in <sighs> our game on Saturday. Uh, but Grace Kalman from Dalhousie. I mean, congrats, Grace, but uh, God. Yeah. Well, what happened? Well, she was right, like... She was hitting 100% on her 81s. Like, she got, like, six kills on her 81s. 81s she's hitting? She's hitting 81s? Yeah. Jeez. It's fast offense. Yeah. yeah. Um, the 12 kills, two errors, 19 attempts, hitting 526. 17 points. So, I think she had five service aces as well. Gosh. Well, you know what? Yeah. Good for you, Becky, but I kind of, gosh, giving it to an opponent, it's like, it's just I'm being a, such a good sport. I'm just bitter about it because I'm, 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 I'm bitter and resentful, and you guys are nice, and I, I don't like it. Gosh. Okay, well, congrats, Grace. Keep, keep dominating, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, we don't want. We don't want her to continue dominating. Oh, are you gonna play her the week? You when, like when what she was bringing? I did. Well, I, I didn't enjoy playing against it. But. Or is this a tampering maneuver here? Like you're trying to you're trying to tamper a little bit and be like, hey, like your game, Grace. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll get in her head. Oh, it's like a back or beach partner, maybe. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I see now. I, I'll, I'll stop calling it out because maybe there's other strings being pulled here. I should watch myself. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the real fun stuff. Clowns of the week. All righty. I'll go first, again, because I'm not feeling great about mine, but feeling pretty passionate about mine. So this came up the other day, and it, it, it came into my mind, man, I occasionally think about volleyball, and I wanted to call out as Clown of the Week because, again, I don't know when this episode's going to air, so I don't know if there's anything relevant right now. So a timeless call out, Josh. Clown of the Week goes to substitution paddles. What an absolutely dumb, stupid mechanism for our sport. It looks so dinky, so silly. What are we doing having those things on the bench, you're fiddling around with them, you can run this sub, hold the thing up. Like, we don't all understand what's happening here. Like, we can't figure it out. Like, why Why do we need these things? I hate them. It looks so silly. What other sport uses them? You see in the NBA, they line up there and they're like holding some dinky little paddle to indicate what player? No! The guy just come on, come on, let's go. Soccer, same thing. Oh, they have the other guy holding it, okay. You wanna get the down rep to hold up the thing? I'm on board, but having the player hold it? No, like, they're going to play a game. Like, we don't need a little, little paddle here. Rant over. Do you guys still use them? We don't use them in the OUA right now. No, we don't either. I think that would have been like the 2018, 2019 season, I think is the last time they used them in the US. Good, and I hope they're gone forever. I hope so too. If they're not, after this episode, they will be. I hope they never come back. What a dumb thing. That was a piece of equipment that schools had to buy. Mm-hmm. Like, a school had to go out and buy wooden or plastic things. 
just with num just numbered. There's just numbers on them. Like it's not that sophisticated. Maybe are they table tennis paddles now that we don't use them? What do they? Yeah, like how smart? do you recycle that? <laughs> yeah, are they ping pong paddles now. You give it to intramurals and they find a use for them. Yeah. Dumb. So dumb. Got to share resources, Garrett. So you guys are you guys are in agreement? Pink, uh, substitution battles, awful. Clown of the oh, year. Oh, terrible. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, success for me then. Okay, that's my clown of the week. Good one. Who's next? Josh, you. So Garrett, I need to clarify. I, this isn't against the team. This is against the formats. So at the Elite 16 in Doha. So on, everyone's all on this Elite 16, Gary. Like, oh, it's the best format. It's meaningful matches. Like, uh, 12 teams get in and then four from the, this big qualifier. So Herrera Gavira, again, no offense to them, they lost. So they go one and one in the qualifier. But then they get what's called the lucky loser, Garrett. So somebody from the main draw didn't check in. They get into the tournament. They win one game in pool. They injury forfeit, so they get a day off in between. They somehow win their round of 12 and then lose in the quarters. Garrett, they went three and four and finished with a fifth place finish in a tournament they shouldn't even have been in. They take home $8,000 when they should have won $0. Another team, here's what a quarterfinal should actually look like. The Grimalds won their pool, so they're three and oh. They lose their quarterfinal, they're three and one. They leave with the same result. So I'm sick of these people telling me the Elite 16 is the best format and it's so entertaining for our sport and it's only meaningful matches. Herrera Gavira did everything they could to leave the tournament early and leave with eight thousand dollars and a fifth place finish. They went three and four, and were like a um, win away from the medal round. This this format sucks. Get it rid of it. Get back to the thirty twos. And why are we limiting how hard it is to get to tournaments in an Olympic cycle when it just showed you a team in the qualifier can easily make the quarterfinals? Like the the sport is too deep to limit it at sixteen teams, and this just shows how like just silly this format is. I'm glad Herrera Gavir spotted out how stupid this is to limit the number of teams in an Olympic qualifying year. There's a lot to unpack there, Josh. Holy. Um, you just hate Lucky Loser as well. I hate Lucky Loser and I hate how the way Elite 16 was designed and how it was described and it was going to be for the fans because the best teams only play the best teams. But if you're doing a pool of four and three teams get out, there's going to be joke stuff happen. Like, how do you have an injury forfeit on February 3rd and win a playoff match on February 4th? Did they get the, the soccer magic spray out and they cured whatever yeah. injury they had that they couldn't yeah. play? Yeah, they had a quick surgery. <laughs> Quick surgery on the third <laughs> afternoon. They're good to go on the fourth. Like, come on. Now they they had the magic the magic stuff from Space Jam. Um, secret stuff, yeah. Mike's secret, secret stuff. stuff, yeah. Um, so the lucky loser. If you take out the lucky loser, right? Because the the one and one, and you get lucky loser in. It's like okay, that that's its own thing, right? So what would you do there instead? I don't know. Like, but the pool of four in the Elite Sixteen and third place gets out. Yeah. Very, no. very yeah. dumb. Very dumb. What's the point? You have the same thing with more teams in other tournaments. Like in the 24 team draws, you have the same thing with that. Th some of those third place teams getting out. So what's the point? Like, uh, and here's the other thing, Josh. Eight grand for fifth at an Elite 16 tournament? That's, That's it? That's what it says. Fifth? Well, yeah. Like the winner gets thirty. They should have got zero by taking a seventeenth. No, like there's no money in our sport. No, 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 no. no. Gosh. So, so eight splits. Yeah, four grand each to fly to Doha and lose a bunch of games, but leave us some money. So they they must be feeling great. They won a lottery ticket, but yeah, pools of four, three getting out. Like it's man, just four grand each. You're basically breaking even on that tournament to come fifth on a top sixteen tournament in the world. That is crazy, the state of our sport right now. Well, let, let's play the other side. If you're a promoter and you want to give more prize money, where does that money come from? The ticket sales? There, it wasn't full stands there. If I'm going to pay you more, I have to make money, right? Like, I don't know. Let's get TikTok involved. It's, it's bumping right now. I don't know. Get the football team out to watch. They rile it up. They have more fun. It brings more people out. Have a few coaches throw some balls into the stands. Like throw that gets some people going. Hands. Obviously. Yes. I don't know. Now we're talking. I don't know. All right. Gosh, how depressing is that? Okay. Cheer us up with a real good singer here. Becky, who you got for Clown of the Week? 
This one I had a tough one with because I will say I have not been following well the news volatile news at well, all. Hey, me, so I'm going neither am I. I called out substitution paddles. So yeah. if you're looking for a cop out, <laughs> look no further. <laughs> I was gonna go with um, the our game on Friday fire alarm. What mid game. And, Mid game fire alarm. Uh, everyone having well, originally thinking that we all had to exit the building, but it turns out there was no fire. Someone pulled the alarm in the middle of the game, which could have been used to our advantage because it was a rough one, but it wasn't. We ended up still losing three nothing. Um, but yeah, fire alarm pulled. We think we were thinking a super fan pulled it to help us, and it just didn't work out. But so who's the clown there? Whoever pulled the fire alarm. Whoever, well, or us for not capitalizing on that <laughs> error. <laughs> it's a free time. She's too nice to be on the show, Garrett. Her player of the week was an opponent. Her clown of the week is them. Like, this is too nice to be on Sharp Cuts. This is like, yeah. This but, is... but honestly, it's a classic volleyball player move. Like, we are very yeah. like that, aren't we? But... Yeah. So did you get the chance? Did you were out of the gym for long enough that they said we have to restart this set? Well, it, it was between sets that it went oh, off. Like we had okay. just finished the second set, then it went off. Um and we found out we didn't actually have to evacuate. Like we all went went to the team room, grabbed sweats and prepared to leave like the facility. Um and then and they were like, no, we, there's no fire. Someone pulled the fire alarm. We can start it again. Okay. So what if a facility, Josh, was so invested in their team that they said, we are going to fudge an entire fire drill, like a fire, like a full thing. We're going to get everybody in on it if our team is losing. On game point, full fire drill action, shut this thing down. We know the exact amount of time we need to waste before they have to either restart the game or restart the set or whatever, and we're going to do it. You could do that and succeed legally. You, absolutely, Garrett. I'm such a diva. The first thing I thought of was uh, I don't want to go outside in my court shoes. Like, I'm not leaving for a fire. Like, I don't want to take my nice shoes outside. I would have to go into the team room and get my other pair of shoes. You'd rather die in a fire <laughs> than get your court <laughs> shoes a little bit dirty. Someone on the, my team said the exact same thing. She's like, I'm not going out in my shoes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not, here, here's what they meant. I'm not going out in my shoes if there's no fire. But if there is a fire, I'm getting the hell out of here <laughs> in bare feet. I don't care. So, Garrett, one of the most famous fire alarm stories happened in The Hag. They were hosting the indoor beach one, and uh, the A-team, April Ross and Alex Klein, were at their first event. They were losing to uh, a country quota match. They almost didn't even get into the whole tournament. Fire alarm goes. They go outside. They talk some strategy. They win their country quota. They qualify. They run the table. They win the whole tournament. So maybe that's what this person was thinking. We're only down 2 nothing. We can set this right. We can win this match. We can go on to win the whole league. Do what the A team did. So is the clown then to your team, Becky, for not actually coming back after that great <laughs> that timeout? Might be, the clown might be to our team, yeah, because yeah. I think that was a perfect reset. Right, but what was I mean, the adjustment yeah. missed? You had enough time to find the adjustment you needed, but you didn't find it. So what was it? We're still trying to figure. We out. still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they should have pulled it again. You needed more time. Yeah, yeah we needed a second fire alarm. <laughs> it was our second one of the week, though. We had one at, uh, during practice, and we had to play through it on the yeah the Wednesday before the game. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe That's the fire always, alarms were the problem. That's always foreshadowing. Fun. Yeah. Okay. Quickly, to revisit last topic before we end this thing, to revisit Josh's... Um, comment earlier volleyball is a weird sport and we talk a lot about like schedule and like what what you should do so curious just to pull the group what is the ideal volleyball format like what is the ideal like this is what volleyball should be you know because you 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 look at other sports and they play league some leagues play league format and do like a playoff series format to the championship in volleyball what do we have 
we've got the weirdest format of any sport, first of all. Like, what the heck are we doing? Like, nobody can understand because it's not, you know, similar to other sports. But what is the ideal, what should we be doing? Should we be doing tournaments? Should we be doing single limb tournaments? Should we be doing league play? What should we be doing? I think for high performers, it should be league and it should be one match. Like when you're in new sports and you're firing up and you scout and you know you're playing that team, like a, a two in a row, Garrett, a back-to-back league format, I think it is really, really good. I enjoy that. I think for kids, the fact that high schools and some like provincial organizations are trying to get them to play three out of fives is absolute nonsense. I think kids should play tournaments well, one day on the weekend and play as many two out of three matches as you can. Uh, I think kids should play four or five matches a day, but it has to be two out of three. The fact that like even offset has switched to three out of five like as a coach i get a little bored garrett like low level volleyball shouldn't be three out of fives okay so the world league is a is a league format right that's high performers and we can do three out of five indoor for that i can get on board with that right but but they do league format and then it's just down to single limb after all that they do single limb to determine a winner they play like 20 plus games and then, you know, one and done. I think as a fan, I, I like the single limb. I'm trying to think of like sports that do series and it's because you want to see the two top teams counter and go through it like NHL playoffs, uh, NBA playoffs. I think football gets it right with the one game and done. I know obviously that's injuries and recovery. They can't play a multiple series. I think part of the joy of volleyball is the amount of good countries there are in the world. And I like seeing like quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. I don't think I would want to see a four to seven series of the World League final or VNL final. I don't know, that's just my personal thought here. No, I agree. I would agree with that. We, we play for semis and finals. It's the best two out of three. And I feel like I'd prefer Oh, you don't like that? I don't think so. I think it should be... I mean, maybe it's just because of the way that, like, tournaments were always, like, in the OBA. You just... You have to perform in that moment. Yeah. Two or three is a bit weird, too, because, like, that third game, you never know, right? And we're not... Like, it's often not, like, a professional league. Like, you're going to have to plan time. You don't know what's going to happen, right? That makes it tough logistically um, to, like put something together last minute or to plan for it and that doesn't come through um, Mm -hmm. is always tough. Whereas like, you know, in the NBA or professional sport, they can do that. Like that's no problem for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I I think that it, well, like the university level, I think that it will take away from the actual level of the game. Cause when you're playing on a third, like you're playing on that third day in a row, like playing three games back to back, like you're fatigued at that point. <laughs> My mind just went to Max Loge. Max Loge would hit like 400 balls in a best two out of three, Gary. Like that'd be too much volume for the kid. No, that'd be enough for him. That'd be about what he what he gets. He'd be good. Um, yeah. Okay. So, and what about Beach, Josh? You you gave Clown of the Week to the dumb format. So what's the best format then? League. We just said we like league. For the beach, Garrett, we need to get back to like the festival feeling. You're going to go watch the whole day. You're going to see a bunch of matches. The courts are always moving. Like I think you should warm up off center court so when that game ends, like the next match is like starting. Enough time to go grab some popcorn and come back. Like I think beach needs to be an all day family fun event. You're outside. Like there's a beer garden if you don't have a family or responsibilities, and you can just have a lot of fun. Like I think beach, you need to be there all day. You need to be outdoors. It needs to be fun. Indoor, I'm a little bit more in like the two hour range kind of like a hockey or basketball game and like it's part of your evening but it doesn't take up the thing i think if you're going to be outside you can milk it more for time i don't want to be in a gym all day like i think gary this is terrible for me to say when the women's game goes to five and our game goes to five i'm just so exhausted and that's two games of volleyball if i had to watch four indoor games of volleyball in one day i I don't think i could do it yeah yeah it's it's too much (laughs) yeah it's a good point so you like the tournament format, but you don't like the Elite 16 format. So what would you do then, Josh? Top two teams think, make it out of pool only? Yeah, and I think 32. The fact that like challengers are 24 teams, the Olympics is 24, it creates that like weird lucky loser bracket stuff. Like 
32 to 16 to 8 is the most pure bracket. I don't know why we do it. The sport has proven it's competitive enough that the the bottom seems like I, I understand that you don't want like meaningless matches at the bottom. And I'm the, the biggest fan. I, if I ever ran a league again, Garrett, or a playoff format, I think modified pool play was the best thing that happened to beach volleyball because it gets rid of those meaningless games in pool play. And every game you win advances you further in the tournament. So you win your pool, you get the buy. If you don't win your first game, you have to win the second game to get out of pool. Like it creates those meaningful situations where Herrera Gravier aren't going to injury forfeit because they would lose the tournament if they lost that game. Like modified pool play, make beach all day because we're outside in the sun and it's awesome. Indoor, it's a business trip. Let's get the strategy. Let's make it hype it up. And it's like a one game. You got to perform in that moment, like Becky said. All right, Josh. Well, yeah. Good for you. Did I sway you, Garrett? Garrett, where do you sit on this issue? Here's where I sit. Let's have as many meaningless matches as possible. <laughs> right? Pools of eight. No, because we talked about it at the top out. of the show. we got to bring it full circle, Josh. We talked about it at the top of the show. Success is not just winning. Okay? So we got to find other ways to succeed. So have a meaningless match, only sky balls. The meaningless matches have to be joke matches. Because think about like a wrestling promotion, how they have to stagger. You can't just do high intensity after high intensity after high intensity. You're sitting there, you get bored. There's no variation. Break it up with a meaningless match that's just a gimmick match. It's just a, it's just a joke. It doesn't really mean much, but you got to do something crazy. Sky balls only. You get, you get bad ref out. I don't know. Get some celebrity ref. I don't know. Do it, do it up crazy that way for those meaningless matches. That's what I think, Josh. If everything's a sky ball, you take away how special it is, and that takes it away. But I, Garrett, I, I think if we're going to have a meaningless match, I think you encourage the players to play one set, and they script it. Like, I think you say, I'm hitting cross here, so they get, like, a huge block. Like, I think we script it until 14 all, and then maybe we can play straight up at the end. But I think for those first, like, couple side changes, you just want the biggest bounces or the biggest blocks or the aces you can get. Yes. Or, say this, you play one set to 15, the loser that gets gets the more money or whatever is on the line. Gets a bit more money. <laughs> he was just trying to throw the game. Like, who can throw the game better? <laughs> ah, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I was like, what? That's a terrible idea. <laughs> that's maybe the worst idea ever. Don't do that. All right. Well, we we're at the end. we're at time. Becky, thanks so much for joining us. Gosh, you had me crying, laughing at uh, the one story you told. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Hope you had a good time. I did. I had a blast. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Josh, as always. And thank you for listening. Hit that subscribe button, five star the podcast. If you're still listening, maybe comment down below. We haven't had any comments, Josh. Uh, you know, I'm starting to worry. Maybe we're, we're struggling. I don't know. Figure it out. Comment down below if it's if you, you yes, the one of you still there. Actually, you probably just left it on. So come turn it off because the episode's ending now. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time.